Welcome to my journey to Islam on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Indeed, it is a pleasure to have with us in Al Hikmat studio Sister Raima Aisha Kinar. Kinar, yes. Kinar. Sister Aisha has a wonderful background, very interesting background, very motivating, I must say. Uh, she has been a former, a former accountant. She worked with Aero Mexico. She worked with, um, with her husband in the fashion industry. Uh, she has been a Muslim or reverted to Islam over 40 years ago. She has a lot of interesting things to tell us that will be able to motivate the Muslims and non-Muslims. So stay tuned as we continue this conversation with Sister Aisha. Fens, the single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high quality products, honest and reliable service. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Fens first, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. For all of your forwarding and freight shipping needs, we at Trin Forwarding International are committed to product delivery. At Trin Forwarding, we have the much needed experience, professionalism and due diligence in freight forwarding, shipping and cargoes. We deliver with timeliness and precision. You can reach out to us at our Caribbean office in Trinidad and Tobago, telephone number 868-624-6250 or our Florida USA office at 305-887-9725. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuhar Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al, fa ma balagta risalatuhu. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to spread the message of the Quran. And he told the prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the prophet, sallallahu If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars, ten Quran, thirty dollars, a hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. So welcome to the show again, sister. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. It's a blessing. We have wanted to get you on the show a little while now. But with all the things that are happening, you know, and all the tight schedule, etc. In recent times, we have been very limited in the world, internationally speaking, with the pandemic and all the nine yards. But today we're here to talk to you about your background and what motivated you to accept Islam and what you love so much about Islam, what um, maybe attracted you the most mm -hmm. since you became a Muslim or to encourage you to accept Islam. We want to talk all about that. Our viewers are very worldwide. We have people all over the world and I'm sure Muslims, Muslims will be motivated by your story and your journey to Islam as well as non-Muslims, they will definitely be motivated with a person like you and your background and how you came into the fold of Islam. But before we get into that, tell us a little bit about your being an accountant. What motivated you to be an accountant? Well, um, when we came from Cuba and I studied here in school, my dad used to be a general in So Cuba. I needed to tell our viewers, you're originally from Cuba. Yeah, I am Cuban born. Good, in Havana. beautiful. Yes. My father was a general with Batista in the prior regime, um, not the revolutionary regime. And we had to come to the United States when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up here and went to school here. So we we came from Cuba with nothing, you know, we, we, were, we had to leave with nothing. 
So when we got here, we tried to make our life as, as good as possible. My mother spoke English, so she was able to get a job as soon as she got here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, my <laughs> father had to go to school to learn English because he didn't know English, mm -hmm. even though he was a military man, but he always had translators with him if he ever had to travel. So he, they worked very hard to put me through school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So once I, I got to, once I got to the university part, my mother, I said, Mom, what am I going to be? What would you like for me to be? At that time, we used to ask our parents what we of course, thought what of we course. should be. And um, she said, well, my daughter, just as long as you learn typing, I know you'll have a job in mm -hmm. an office. And so in those I, days, typing was one of the most important yeah, things. Yeah, and I hated it, unfortunately. <laughs> I disliked it very much. But anyways, I said, okay, I'll, I'll learn it so I can have a job and I can help the family. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I realized that I was good at math and I loved math. So I was able to go to one of the small colleges. They didn't send me to Miami-Dade or any of these, you know, Broward Community College because at that time it was the 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, my father did not want me to get into the hippie era. And he said a lot of kids that go to those colleges at that time <coughs> are going to be doing drugs and, and in things that are, right. are yeah. promiscuous. So. He said, no, you'll go to a private college. So I went to a small private college to study accounting. I only did higher accounting. I never became a CPA. But um, thank God, once I finished my school, I was able to get a job with an airline. And I worked for them for 13 years. I worked two years as, a, as just a clerk, accounting clerk. And then I was promoted to be international treasury manager, which was in charge of payroll, taxes, collections, with Aero, with Aero Me Mexico. Yeah, Aero Mexico in their main office in the U.S., which did everything all uh, from all their offices around the world except Mexico. Interesting. Yeah. Inter so as we were talking before we came on the show, mm -hmm. you said that you also worked with your husband in yes. the fashion industry. Yes, that's the industry. So what, what, what kind of fashion is he into? Well, he, <laughs> he is into leather garments. He wholesales leather garments. Uh, at the time when I started with him, he was just beginning because he had just finished his MBA at St. Thomas University. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I, I wanted to be able to help him even though I was still working at that time. Um, uh, he, he started with importing from Turkey, but then I told him, my mom taught me how to sew. So your husband is from Turkey? He's from Istanbul, yes. Interesting, yes. okay. So uh, he, I told him, my mom taught me how to sew, and she taught me how to make patterns and things like this, so maybe we should start manufacturing here. Mm -hmm. And that's what we started doing. So what's the name of the company? It's called NATO International Inc. Is that still in operation? Yes. Yes, NATO since International 1985. Inc. So you guys do more export? Well, we would love to do export. We, we are wholesaling within the United States at this moment, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but we don't manufacture here anymore. Mm -hmm. We are uh, manufacturing in Indonesia and we're manufacturing in, um, we were manufacturing in China. We've stopped that pretty much and in Turkey. <coughs> oh, okay, okay, yes. that's... And then we bring in the product and then we distribute it so to So it's the leather customers. products? Like uh, leather garments, the, it's tool and leather, silks and leather, laces and leather. We, we started with the heavy jackets, but then we became a little bit more accustomed to the Florida weather. Mm -hmm. So we made it more airy and, and light that you can wear them all around the year. Interesting. So yeah. that's another entire world that you got into oh, from, totally. from accounting like fashion. to fashion <laughs> and the whole nine yards. And yeah. then your daughter is an expert in the fashion world, right? <laughs> yeah, she did. She became one. I, I don't know. Oh, I guess because we like and for to our dress. And for, 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 um, for our viewers, actually, your daughter is known as Yaz. Yes, a spaz, 89, yes. Yes, a pa spaz, 89. 89, yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. And she loves fashion. She loves uh, the beauty of women. She likes women to have good self-esteem. So mm -hmm. that's what she works on. 
So from Aeromexico and in the fashion industry with your husband, uh, you also had some experience in working with the airlines. Yes, well, I, I was based in, in, in Miami. Uh -huh. So I really had to travel only for meetings management meetings and things like that. But you said that you also worked in the London gear oh, services. Oh, well, later on, after I, after I worked with my husband, yes, I, um, I worked with him 13 years. And after that, I really was yearning to go back to corporate America because I, I like to be in my... When you work in a factory, it's a totally different mental level mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm. deal with. And I didn't want to lose my mental agility and that's what I thought I was mm -hmm, losing so mm -hmm. I decided to go back to corporate America and I went to I was asked to work for a company called AAR landing gear services which the main office is out of Chicago mm -hmm. and uh, it originally started as a, a company that just did radios for airplanes mm -hmm. but then it grew to the whole airplane and um, I uh, went to work for them uh, was a f well let me go back a little bit when when I became Muslim mm -hmm. I started wearing hijab as, right as you know even before I got married because that was the last thing I did but uh, when I went to work for AAR a friend of mine told them that I was a great accountant that they shouldn't lose me as an accountant that they should hire me and that she could convince me to not wear a hijab to go to work interesting, because interesting. they they are own, Israeli owned the mm -hmm. company and um, uh, at that time I really did want to get away from working in the warehouse with my husband I wanted to be independent from that because I believe that when you're too many hours with with your husband then you go home and you bring the problems from the work home mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I I wanted my happiness with him I didn't want the demise so um, I went to um, the job. Um, I did go. I took my hijab to the front door of the office. I took it off to, for the interview. I immediately, of course, I got the job. I worked with, I had three months of them for them to give me for um, uh, probation that they check you to see if you work fine or not. And uh, I passed it of course with flying f colors and when I went to the general manager to, and he told me that I was accepted that they wanted to keep us that you know we were a great asset to you, the company uh, I told him that I had taken off my hijab only because my friend had suggested it and I didn't want her to look bad in front of him but that it has been the most difficult days of my life to mm. be here because I found out that once I took off my hijab, I wanted to be like the other girls. Every day I would do something different to look a little bit cuter, I mm -hmm. guess you can call mm -hmm. that. <laughs> and uh, that was devastating to me because I had been wearing it for 20 years and I felt naked without it. So I went to him and I told him that the only way I could stay working with them, even though I was happy with them, was keeping my hijab. So his words to me were, if you have it in the car, I guess he must have seen me driving with it home yes. uh, to the work. Uh, if you have it in the car, please go and put it on immediately. Wow. So alhamdulillah, even though with some of the managers it wasn't pleasing to them, but I really didn't care. Subhanallah. Um, I stayed with them. I worked with them seven years mm -hmm. until the business got slow and they started um, laying off a lot of people because it's a it's a it's a curve it's a every 10 years the landing gears all come to be overhauled and then it slows down and then it goes back up so they laid me off at that time and um, some other persons that I knew from other companies that were in the same business uh, knew me and they knew how I worked so once they laid me off, immediately I was hired by United Technologies Landing Gear Aerospace Services mm -hmm. that they did the same thing. And then I went to work for them till I retired now. Wow, so you, had, you got a very interesting background, a wide scope of life and 
the yeah. whole nine yards. So tell us now your journey to Islam. We would like to really hear about that and let our viewers hear about it, as we said before, and motivate people on it. Yeah. So how many years now have you been a Muslim? Approximately 43 years. 43 yes. years. Since I began studying it. it. I went slowly into the hijab and into things like this, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, my mm -hmm. first thing, well, first of all, I loved the Quran when I was given the Quran. It was something that I, I finally realized that there was a religion that God would judge me for who I was, what I thought, what I felt what was in my soul, in my heart, in my mind. A lot of people judge you and they make their own assumptions and, and that can make you or break you. But I, I had to separate from that. You know? So what really motivated you to start to look towards Islam, the Quran? Oh, I was looking for an other religions after Christianity. Okay, um, so you were a Christian. I was Catholic. Catholic. I was Catholic. I went to Catholic school for 12 years. And you were just in search of... And I loved God and I loved my religious nuns that, work in, that were in school with mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. It's not that I didn't like them. Mm -hmm. It was the, the, the rituals that were there that, and the things that we believed in that were, there was no logic behind it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. as we, as I started with my friends and they started talking to me about it, um, I started looking for things in the Quran that would answer my questions mm -hmm. of how I felt religion should be. Okay. Um, and um, I wanted to learn how to just trust God instead of trusting people. Because right, right. we worry too much about people and we forget what Allah sees in yes, us. Yes, yes, yes. And um, this was what I wanted to learn. So through the Quran, I was able to find a lot of answers to my questions. And that's very important because a lot of people sometimes um, ask, what book should you give to non-Muslims? What should you recommend? And I always tell people, uh, Sister Aisha, I always tell people, the Quran, it doesn't matter what we think may sound complicated, but there are verses that you have to try to understand and there are lessons about prophets and references that are so very clear because the Quran is very clear. Mm -hmm. There are laws and regulations that somebody somewhere sometime will be attracted to it. It yes. will catch their eyes, it will catch their hearts, and it's as simple as it is. And hence, I always recommend, like, you know, that's why in Al Hikmat, we got this thing called 100,000 Quran Drive every year. That we try to, our goal every year is to distribute 100,000 Quran. It doesn't matter Certainly. if it has to go to Muslims to better understand. Oh, but basically it's about non-Muslims and the in correctional institutions, wherever it is we try to do that. Mm -hmm. Because as long as a person get a copy of the Quran, they open it, there is something that will catch their hearts. And I don't mean their eyes, but really create an impact on their hearts. And that's interesting. I, 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 I am really, really, I f I, my, my Iman feels strengthened when I hear you said that, that you read the Quran yes. and that was the means because that's what Allah means when he says yes. the Quran is the book of guidance. Well, it's, it's the main quality of Islam, you know, the, uh, and of, of the Quran. That the Quran, one, as a matter of fact, most of the time when you just open it in any page, it has the answer to what you're thinking and what your question is. And it authorizes what you really want. Yes. I mean, you can get other people and other books to help explain, but that is the concrete authorization. Definitely. And if you ask people, the people will, I can't say everybody, because I'm sure there must be people that go strictly by their Quran, but the people will go with what is convenient for them. And their culture. The Quran, and, and the their culture, culture. And the culture. And I didn't have the culture mm -hmm. of anyone that was around me, mm -hmm. Islamically, at that time, you know. And I didn't even know a lot of people that were from, from Islam. And I didn't know much about Islam because in the Catholic Church at that time, you know, I'm 67 years old. So at that time when I was in school, I was never taught about Islam. 
Mm -hmm. In theology class, we had theology class in Catholic school, and Islam was not one of the uh, religions that we were taught. Wow. wow. And I always wondered about that. And researching on it, it was, I think the, the, the Christian church was scared to teach about it because it would open a door that might lead their followers into, into that path. And, and because I didn't know it, I, I originally thought that Islam was something like a Hindu religion or something from the Middle East. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, at that time also, they didn't teach us a lot of geography here in the schools. They only taught us about American history. And you knew all of America, but you didn't know anything about the rest of the world. And that's a good point you made, sister, because even though my parents, mm -hmm. my parents were Muslims, Mm -hmm. But when I was growing up as a young boy in college, etc., I mm -hmm. used to think the same thing, that this Islam is an Indian religion. Yeah. It's an Arab religion. It's yeah. an African religion. Yeah. But it's only when you read the Quran that you get the understanding that this is not any mm -hmm. culture, any uh, people's book, or mm -hmm. any specific nation you, you know, the voice of any nation. It is the word of Allah. Yeah. But the problem with that is that a lot of people, they practice Islam a lot, not everybody. They practice Islam based on their culture yes. or they promote a lot of their cultural opinions yeah. or they probably talk Quran, but then they live culture. Yes. And unfortunately, that mis is a great misrepresentation in the minds of people who are searching. And as a young boy, while I was in college, I, it didn't make sense to me. Yeah. It didn't really make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, you are Catholic and you are, you are looking for truth. I, being born for Muslim parents, I was looking for truth myself. Also, I was thinking yeah. this is a cultural yeah. thing and yeah. I want to look for something really, really. And I had headed to Christianity. You see? Oh, yes. And then Allah gave me the guidance and brought me back, back into Islam. So uh, as you mentioned those things, it is so fascinating. And that's why I try to tell people out there, when you present Islam, mm -hmm. when you propagate Islam, when you do da'wah, you got to do da'wah the way the Quran says it. Yes. And the, w the methodology that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, applied it. All the prophets, they use the right strategy. All yes. the prophets, actually. Yes. So that's a very powerful point you mentioned yes. there, that um, the, the misrepresentation important. of the culture flavor into religion. Nobody says you cannot like biryani and you're from the Indian continent and like roti or, I mean, food. You yeah. have your choice of what you eat. You might have dress code, style, that as long as it's within the Islamic laws, but when it comes to lifestyle, it should be within Quran and Sunnah. Yeah. Well, Islam is a way of life. Yes. Yes, it's I'm not glad. A way, it's not a way of cooking. It's not a way of dressing. I mean, dressing, yes, it's within the code, but it's, it doesn't belong to... It, it be, God brought our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah brought him to the people that needed it at that time, alhamdulillah. And... But he brought it for all the whole world. The whole he world. He didn't bring it just for them. And it is a lifestyle for all human beings. And it's a lifetime beings. for all human beings. I love that that you have said yeah. that. And that should open the eyes of our viewers. Yes. Because, sister, that's the problem. Yes. That's a major problem that people suffer out there. Yes. And people misrepresent. Interesting. It is so interesting that you mentioned that. Yeah. That um, the, the whole, you know, concept of people not thinking that this Islam... Yeah. is an Arab, Indian, Pakistani, African yeah, religion. No. I, didn't, I didn't even know where it was from. And Interesting. Yeah, I only thought Catholics. I didn't even know too many of the Christian religions, even though we studied them uh, as deviations from Catholicism, mm -hmm, which is how they mm -hmm. teach you in the schools. So interesting, my dear sister. You know what? Your conversation is so very healthy and so very interesting. Would you believe we have been speaking for approximately 25 minutes now? Wow. Oh, yeah. So we got to go on a short break. Okay. But when we come back, we want to touch into the real thing here now. Okay. Some of the things that got you on the track okay. as you were heading to accept Islam. Some of the things, what motivated you the most, uh, what attracted you as you strive towards 
becoming a Muslim or searching for your truth. I know that you had mentioned to me before we started a show that you were friends and uh, are, you, are you still friends with the, the king's daughter, King oh, yes. Abdullah? She's the most wonderful friend I have. Yes. Excellent. So you were a friend. Uh, you 40 were years we've been friends. Ex so you were a friend with King Abdullah's daughter yes. and you are still friend yes. with her. Abdullah. So when we come back, we'll continue that conversation. Yes. Whether she influenced you in your Islam, what part and role she played and how you felt and what you experienced and what you learned. Basically, so our viewers can learn from your journey to Islam. So stay Amen. tuned. When we return after the short break, we'll continue with Sister Aisha on what really motivated her and influenced her and what she loved and what attracted her as she became Muslim or as she was searching towards becoming a Muslim, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim Ya ayyuha Rasul Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik Wa illam taf'al Fa ma balagta risalatuhu Very deep Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To spread the message of the Quran And he told the Prophet And if you do not spread the message You did not fulfill the mission of the messenger So you and I are followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. $3, 10 Quran, $30, 100 Quran, $300. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhum. If you would like to dedicate copies of one of these publications as Sadaqah Jariya, continuous blessings for your parents or dear ones who have passed away, or fi sabilillah in the path of Allah, please give us a call so we can place your names on these dedicated publications. You can call us at 954-986-0158 or you can also visit us at www.alhikmat.com Allah is the creator of different faces Allah is the creator of all races Allahu, 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 Allah. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my journey to Islam on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Uh, for those of you who've just tuned in, we're talking to Sister Aisha, Sister Raima Aisha Kanara, a sister with a very, very interesting background as she journeyed to Islam, as Allah guided her towards Islam. And as Allah brought her through his mercy to becoming a Muslim, she has been a Muslim for over 40 years now. And um, stay tuned as we continue our conversation with her in what really attracted her, what are some of the things that attracted her. So Sister Aisha, so we were talking about the Quran. Yes, you read the Quran and you were impressed and it created an impact into you. Mm -hmm. So friends, environment, what did you like about Islam in the very beginning of days as a person searching? Friends were very important. Mm -hmm. um, the friends that I met that were from the Middle East, they were from Saudi Arabia and Syria, were very important to me. They were sincere friends. They accepted you for who you were. Um, they bonded with you personality wise not for what you had or what you looked like or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it, i felt very comfortable with them and i felt trusting you know that i could trust them so as a young girl growing up mm -hmm. at that time in society remember mm -hmm. that's an interesting time the whole mm -hmm. world you're doing things for the world your lifestyle is all about the world and impression what did you like in Islam that really attracted you? Well, really, as an intellectual person, I I realized as I I was I was growing up. Okay, I had been believe it or not, I was chubby, chubbier, and um, I wasn't liked so much by my peers because I wasn't cute like the other girls, and 
that gave me a lot of issues with my self-esteem, you know, and I, I knew that I was a good friend. I knew that I, you know, I had never hurt anybody's feelings. I had never, but I didn't understand why they didn't like me. And Maybe they just jealous you. <laughs> I didn't know. When you're a teenager, you don't think of those things mm -hmm, in such mm -hmm. details, you know, life teaches you that. So I, I realized that in this, the one of the first things I learned in Islam was about our covering, or it, it shocked me to, to think that I had to cover. Mm -hmm. The explanation that I got from our friends was that God sees the good in you. God sees the love you are having. Uh, your Islam is internal mm -hmm. to start. Forget the external if you don't have the internal. Of course. So because of that, that was the first thing that attracted me to listening to them. Mm. And then when I saw that we cover so that people see who we are as a person, it's, it's, it's not a fact that because you have to look this way or that way. No, you have to, people have to know you as a person first mm -hmm. and as a human being and your values as such before they have to value you because you are cute, because you're skinny, because you're elegant, because you're sexy looking, because whatever. Mm. That it's is all totally about your, That's why in Islam we talk about innamal amalu bin niyad. Exactly. Allah judges your actions by your intentions. Your yes. inner, yes. your yes. heart must yes. be connected to God. Your actions should be for the pleasure of God. Yes. And of course we do have laws and code for your Actions action, of and course. what you look like because every action has a reaction. Yes, correct. And yes. we have to watch that So I said wow, that's something that people I w I'm not gonna have to worry about this anymore Subhanallah. When you become friend. a Muslim. Yes, when <laughs> I, I like become that. a Muslim. I like that. I'm going to Have more I can be myself and I don't have to be what they expect me to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can be uh, a good daughter. I can be, I can say no to something I don't agree with because mm -hmm. it's not in my power. As a Christian, I had that, but I sometimes I still did it because, because the peers would p push me to it. Right, right. So I got the self-esteem and the self-strength in me to be able to stand up for who I am and not be embarrassed or ashamed to put my godly beliefs and my what Allah has instilled in me as my um, qualifications of for going anywhere. And I like that very much, sister, because yeah. you know, as a person, this is a very powerful point you're making. Yeah. As a person, an accountant, someone you know, you worked with your husband in the fashion industry, you worked with AAR, that's it, the London and Gear Services. But yet you have that point that even though, because a lot of people believe that's it, a job, a position, a yeah. career. But what you are telling us here in your journey to Islam is that you found self-confidence, yeah. self-confidence, strength, inner strength, and uh, contentment and peace and tranquility yeah. and that independence and very powerful that confidence in yourself yes. islam gave that to you yes the quran oh, yes. your belief in allah and your lifestyle as a muslim and that's very powerful because a lot of Mus muslims or ladies and men who were born muslims they suffer that complex they do and i think and that's why they try to leave the quranic teachings they try to leave the teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and search otherwise mm -hmm. because they don't understand what the Quran says. Yes. They don't understand the power in the Sunnah of the Prophet. So they don't get that confidence and that strength yeah. and that peace and tranquility. And uh, that, that's what you were saying that when you became yeah. a Muslim or while you were searching for Islam and you saw these things in Islam, it gave you that strength and confidence. And that's oh, yeah. a powerful message. Oh, it's, it's, it is my world. Mm, so that is one of the things that yes. gave you that, um, what I will say, that helped yes. to guide you to become a Muslim. Yes, yes. That you loved about Islam. And no one can convince me otherwise to do anything unless mm. it was something that Allah prescribed for me or, or He allowed me to do it within my religious mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, life. 
So following that, my doors just opened. Wow. My life became easy, you know. Subhanallah. Um, Allah blessed me with so much. He, he made my eyes see when He sends me messages. To the sense, uh, messages I mean signs. There's things that Allah does for us that He puts in our path to either teach us something or give us a little hint of where, what we should do when we're undecisive. So tell us a little bit, at what age did you accept Islam officially? I, well, I, I started studying Islam at about 23. Mm -hmm. And um, for a while I was, you know, I started with fasting and then I did started with prayers because I had to learn my prayers. And then I had to, I, I went little by little. I started dressing modestly. Mm -hmm. I didn't cover, mm -hmm. I didn't cover mm -hmm. in the beginning because I was also of course, of working course. and, and I, didn't, I didn't know how to do that part. And I didn't know how I would be. And you were still walking the path. I <laughs> was, yeah, I was still. You have to go slowly. Islam yes. is not something that you go and you say, oh, I want to be Muslim. And they tell you, like many people do, take Shahada right now. No, no you can't do that because that person doesn't know what they're doing mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Islam is something that Allah puts in you mm -hmm. or he doesn't. Yes, yes. Because, yeah, we don't want to. In, but anyways. Continuing with the story, so I went ahead and I, um, I oh my gosh, I, I told you something and I lost my my uh, thought. Um, yeah, the whole concept of you, how you uh, your dress. And oh, okay, with the dress. Okay, yeah. so after that, after that, I started covering, and I wouldn't cover for work at that time. But I started covering to get used to it, you know, and to see I, I would dress, you know, long or I would wear boots with a midi dress or things like that, you know, to cover. So you just started dressing modestly. Modestly, yeah. modestly. And um, eventually um, people started asking me, what are you doing? You know, why are you doing this? And I said, I don't know. It's Allah is bringing me to this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and. He is making me enjoy my life more this way than I was How previously How did you feel when before. you started dressing in a more modest way? And well, my father never let me dress too on modestly, okay. immodestly, <laughs> because of the fact that he was a general and he, he, he was a strict person. But at the same time, I, I didn't want to wear short skirts mm -hmm. or, or show my legs or things like that. Um, it made me feel like if I was dressing the way I wanted, not the way the world wanted me to Excellent. dress. It was didn't mean that I looked like a slob or I looked, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, uncoordinated. I always liked to dress nicely, but I did it in the modest way. Right. And right. and there is that way, you of know. Course, of there course. there's no reason why you have an excuse for dressing the yeah. dresses that you have around in the stores you can always find how to dress so with that i um the last thing i did was my i met my i had met my friends already and they uh, i was able to go to hajj mm -hmm. uh, with my husband oh before getting to your husband because yes. I, I wanted to get to that point but for the benefit of our, our viewers uh -huh. because a lot of times a lot of sisters get m get married and they convert to Islam to get married to a Muslim husband. Yes, yes. But in your case, it wasn't that. You no. accepted Islam as and then I a regular for a person, and then you found this Muslim husband and got yes. married. It's yes. not that you got married because of him no. or he converted you. It's not that at all. Allah no. guided you before, and how many years after becoming a Muslim you met him? Uh, well, I, it was about nine and a half years. That's important. I just wanted to clear that yes. so we understand. Yes. That. Well, the thing is, I, I stayed friends with, with uh, as you had mentioned before, with my Saudi friends. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, before well. We uh, the kings, the King Abdullah's well, daughter. Well, the, the way I met her was my friends from the university that their mother used to come visit. They had, their mother used to visit about six months out of the year to mm -hmm. be with them here. Mm -hmm. Um, she had no one to be with them and they had to be in school all the time plus they wanted to go out and have fun I guess also so I would stay with her most of the time and through through this beautiful Bedouin lady her name is Batla 
May Allah have her in the highest level, inshallah, of Jannah Ameen. one day. Ameen. Ameen. Um, she, although she didn't speak English and she didn't know how to read or write, she was the most beautiful woman in the world that taught me Islam, even wow. in Arabic. And I learned Arabic from her. So because how old all is she now? She passed away, unfortunately, oh. in 2011. Okay, okay. Because um, she was, m yeah, much older than, than myself. Yeah, I mean, she was, she must have been, at, if she would have lived, I think she would have probably been in her 90s now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, she, she was tough on me. She wasn't soft on me. She had the mentality that most women here in this life are, are not guided. Um, they're a little bit too loose uh, with mm -hmm. their with their bodies, and and that I tell you, she used harsh words with me. But even though I was insulted to hear, this was something that I knew from Catholic school and from my parents' of course, teachings. Of the nuns, the nuns yes. that you went through. I so mean. it wasn't anything new that she was telling me. She just was affirming that my previous teachers or parents were telling me the truth and she was like a friend to you so she yes. was just sharing yeah she didn't have to yeah, change yeah. me for anything so through this i was able to learn uh, some arabic and then i was able to change my path totally mm -hmm. uh, she I, I like i told you i i believe that she beat haya into me with her words but now she is i love her as much as my own mother mm -hmm. um and i pray for her as if it's so my are you mother still connected to the family yes so the the way i met the princess she um she is married to the older son of the um, the boys that were here in school that okay. I that she that I took care of. to one of them. She was married to one of the, not to the not to the twins. Right. She was married to the oldest of the brothers. Okay. The, the okay. And uh, that's King Abdullah's daughter. And she he married King Abdullah's daughter. But at that time he, he wasn't a king. Right, 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 right. right. He but was no, just so. So, so then she is related, of course, then to King Salman. Of course, she's the niece of she, King Salman. She is the niece of King Salman. Yes, yes. yes. But we've been, we've. I so knew her since she was very young. She's, she's cousin with, um, with the son, the famous boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Oh. Yeah, MBS. MBS. Yes. Muhammad, Muhammad bin, bin Salman. Salman yes. Interesting. Interesting. So, um, she, we became friends. We clicked as soon as we met. She already had a few children when I met her. They loved me dearly because I, after I met her, I used to visit her very often. Since I worked with the airlines at mm -hmm, that time, mm -hmm. I was able to get very cheap flights. So right. I, I traveled a lot to be with them. And I felt very privileged that they had allowed me into their family. Mm -hmm. That they had, because I was like, like part of their family of always, course, you know. Um, not, not everybody does that you especially i don't know in the arabic culture you don't you don't find that too and much especially the kingdom is not everybody well, will yeah. be welcome into the kingdom with them yeah but really i didn't know i didn't know that much about who they were yeah it didn't mean that much to because me because you came to know them through different connections yes i met them through Students themselves and school and university yes. and yeah. themselves yes they would tell me stories but to me it was like oh, yeah, okay yeah, yeah. this is just a story or maybe if i believed it or i didn't mm -hmm. or i couldn't even imagine what it was real so she um we were friends and and we had a lot of fun every time i traveled to meet her and you know i saw their way of life i saw the family life i saw the care and and mm -hmm. and affection that they gave and that was so important to me they became my family wow they became my family until today until yeah. today I don't I don't see too much you know the the boys at all so because when you go to Saudi Arabia you still meet her right oh I go to she's the one that gets me my visas to go to Saudi Arabia and she's the one that I visit all the time I, I will not go unless it's with her permission you are in direct connection to the kingdom in Saudi Arabia that's a blessing I mean yeah. Allah has blessed you because if you are in connection with the princess yeah and she's your friend I mean that's a mercy from Allah definitely well 
she to me she's more than a princess because a princess is a human being to me she's a wonderful person yeah. an extremely wonderful person that even if she wasn't a princess i would be her friend and so anyways. she has also been very influential in motivating you in islam in your walk in Definitely. and journey to islam Definitely. that is so interesting and 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 learn to understand mm -hmm. saudis or or syrians or you know things like that i've i've learned by being among them for so many years subhanallah i think that is very very phenomenal you're very unique alhamdulillah allah blessed you and i, I it is a blessing from allah that allah guided you and gave you all this experience and all this knowledge and allah you know allah has given you that comfort and that warmth to feel as a new muslim uh, feel at home in this world so you are in a little jannah in this world and then you have the major the real jannah in the hereafter inshallah inshallah that's, may allah grant it that's yes. a blessing so sister again we have almost been talking for approximately another 20 minutes uh, so tell me what else you'd like to conclude with in about a minute or two well me. that all the training that we talked about brought me to know how to be a mother and raise my children properly right. and that 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 was really the, uh, maybe the goal Allah had for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and it was mm -hmm. a blessing a blessing that you were able to bring up the children and, guide and, uh, and having a wonderful husband also that was very kind and loving Be a real mother Alhamdulillah. a good wife Allah just blessed you with all those things and what would you like to tell our viewers we got viewers worldwide and I mean all over the world Pakistan Arabia Dubai you name it <laughs> And I'm sure you're going to have to send this show to your friend there in Saudi Arabia, the inshallah. princess herself, inshallah. inshallah. So what advice would you like to give to the world at large? New Muslims, people who, we got a lot of non-Muslims who look at our shows, yes. a lot of non-Muslims on social media, on television, etc. So what, in a few words, would you like to tell Muslims, Muslim sisters especially, non-Muslim sisters, brothers, everybody, in a few words? my best advice to them is to seek the knowledge the islamic knowledge mm -hmm. even if you don't become a muslim at the time that you need it but you will s find answers in islam mm -hmm. that you won't find anywhere else Subhanallah. and that those answers will put you one step forward towards islam and once you find your peace and you understand what this peace means in life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you will never turn back. Subhanallah. When you find that tranquility. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's, I don't even remember what my life was like when I was not Muslim. Wow, wow. To that point. So how can I even desire it? I can't desire it because yeah. I don't even remember what it was. Because when you achieve bigger things, it, yes. it just overpowers all the other all the significant rest. things and in today's life it's it's difficult and there's many things that surround us that will take us away from from Allah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you have to know that he's the only one that controls every second of your life subhanallah we have no control of anything of course well sister thank you very much it was really a blessing jazakallah khair to have you with us and for you to take the time to come in Al Hikmat studio so that we can be a means of dawa. This talk show can be a means of dawa, it can mean a reminder for other people out there, for ourselves first of or first of all, of course, and a reminder for ourselves yes. and for the rest of the world. Thank you, Jazakallah, for coming and to our viewers out there, always stay tuned to Al Hikmat TV. Uh, we have a lot more shows as usual on My Journey to Islam and different uh, talk shows of uh, views and interviews, interfaith views and interviews, global uh, issues, a whole variety you can get on YouTube, on Facebook, on social media. So all the stay tuned to Al Hikmat TV and we thank you for viewing this show with Sister, I want to get the name right, Roraima Aisha Kanar. It has been a blessing to have her with us. And I'm sure that you would have learned a lot. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Since 9-11, there has been a great fear of Islam. We need Muslims, I always say, to speak up in this yes. country. 
Much of our Islamic community is perceived to be insular. Most Americans have never met a Muslim or are not aware of having met a Muslim. Most people don't have enough education in terms of what the entirety of Islam represents. It's very easy to hate someone or to put stereotypes on people that you've never interacted with. But do you think if Muslims were more integrated in society, in America, in the United States of America, then there would have been less anti-Muslim scenario? I think it's even more important that our clergy uh, speak up. They are, after all, the moral force in our community. You see, the Islam that is celebrated is one which opens its doors. Having this type of dialogue um, in terms of uh, a community outreach or something that Muslims have to do is go out just like you do in inviting uh, non-Muslims to the iftar. That yeah. A lot, and you do a lot of speaking to mixed groups. We have to change the language from us versus them to a language of we. I believe that if we can stand together against the forces of hatred and be unified in this country, then we can do wonderful things. Bringing us together to enhance the beauty of humankind. I think religion this. can be such a, a powerful force for unity. Of course. We've made it into this like, uh, you know, powerful force for disunity. Keep trying to understand each other and, and care for each other and keep building a, a, a world community because that, I believe that that's what, what God wants for, for us all. And I'm in their mosques and they're in my temple and um, it's been a, a phenomenal experience. I've had a very warm and welcoming experience in, from all the brothers and sisters in the community. That every human being is either your brother in faith or brother in humanity. In Arabic the word is lita arafu. So that you will learn to understand one another. And this is the truth of what it should be. You see, this is why I am so pleased to come here today, to support the work of Al Hikmat. Uh, the kind of intolerance and the violence that we see uh, across the globe is mm -hmm. rooted in ignorance, which we can overcome by teaching. Yes. Also yes. rooted in fear, which mm -hmm. we can overcome by experiencing, where we can actually live in each other's presence. You know, it's rooted in this um, myopic kind of my way only, rather mm -hmm. than this understanding mm -hmm. that maybe all of us have more in common and at the core of who we are is this truly global family that we belong to. I'd like to say what a joy and pleasure it is to have Sheikh Shafayat as my friend, as my teacher, as my co-worker in the vineyard of Allah, God, where we work together to make this world a better place, to do God's work, mm -hmm. to do the work which we are commanded to do as human beings. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuha rasul, ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al, fa ma balagta risalatuhu. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to spread the message of the Quran. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet ﷺ. If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. $3, 10 Quran, $30, 100 Quran, $300. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhum. If you would like to dedicate copies of one of these publications as Sadaqah Jariyah, continuous blessings for your parents or dear ones who have passed away, or fi sabidullah in the path of Allah, please give us a call so we can place your names on these dedicated publications. You can call us at 954 986 0158 or you can also visit us at www.alhikmat.com. Allah is the creator of different faces Allah is the creator of all races Allahu, Allahu, 
Al Hikmat in collaboration with Atlas Immigration Foundation now offering free professional immigration consultations and affordable services. We work with all types of visas and immigration statuses. The office is located inside the Al Hikmat office building. For more information, you can contact us at toll free 1 888 963 9163 or 407 242 5140 or contact the Al-Hikmat Dawah office at 954-986-0158. For all of your forwarding and freight shipping needs, we at Trin Forwarding International are committed to product delivery. At Trin Forwarding, we have the much needed experience, professionalism and due diligence in freight forwarding, shipping and cargoes. We deliver with timeliness and precision. You can reach out to us at our Caribbean office in Trinidad and Tobago, telephone number 868-624-6250 or our Florida USA office at 305-887-9725 Royal Bengal Trading, importer, exporter, wholesaler of Bangladeshi Indo-Pak groceries and spices. We specialize in various authentic Indian masalas, juices, flowers, rices and spices. We offer exclusive brands as Ocean Pearl, Shan, National, Tilda, Himani and many many more. We're located at 36B Coroni Savannah Road, Charlieville, Shiguanas, Trinidad and Tobago. You can call us at 473-4676 or call 476-3117. Email us at wahabdk at gmail.com. Fens, the single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances, and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high-quality products, honest and reliable service. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Fens first, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. For all of your forwarding and freight shipping needs, we at Trin Forwarding International are committed to product delivery. At Trin Forwarding, we have the much needed experience, professionalism and due diligence in freight forwarding, shipping and cargoes. We deliver with timeliness and precision. You can reach out to us at our Caribbean office in Trinidad and Tobago, telephone number 868-624-6250 or our Florida USA office at 305-887-9725.